Today I'm going to be going over the Kawasaki Prairie 700. I'm going to be doing two videos on this, one of them being a service, the other one being an overview of the four-wheeler, and I'll put a link below to each of those videos. I just want to show you a couple things on this four-wheeler, kind of give you an overview of what this four-wheeler looks like before maybe you go out and buy one, or maybe you just want to understand it a little bit more. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you that. Now. We're going to start on your right. on your right hand side here we've got a belt system underneath of this clutch cover here we've got uh, your primary clutch up here we've got your secondary clutch back here this uh, Kawasaki Prairie has what they call the Kawasaki engine brake control which is a KEBC and you'll see that on the side of your four-wheeler here a couple other places it talks about a little bit in your manual there um, but it is a, uh, a engine braking control that is actuated and controlled by this little uh, solenoid here, or this mechanism here. And this is an actuator that uh, tends to fail. This is a common problem on these four-wheelers. Also, the other thing that these actuators uh, periodically will... Um, need reset you got to you can find a lot of those instruction on how to reset those i think i have a couple of those videos check my channel for those but it's something you've got to reset periodically and that is when you need to service your four-wheeler or if that belt actually trips that solenoid or that actuator it's going to need to be reset on your right hand side here is your fuel petcock you've got on off and reserve so three different settings there this is an intake boot that runs down to your clutch cover there underneath there you've got a sensor you've got your rear output boot uh, right behind your clutch cover there and um, you want to make sure that, that boot is in good condition so you're not getting debris in there directly underneath your clutch cover is your engine identification number and that uh, generally starts with a vf i think on all of these prairie 700s it's a vf 700 and that's a v-twin motor obviously we've got your rear brake control here that runs uh with a cable back to your rear brake system i'll go over that here in a little bit on the right hand side we've got your shifter i'll go over that here in a little bit as well as your ignition switch you've got a um your front shock is right here you've got a, a two front shocks there this is what you call the strut or the spindle of the four-wheeler and inside of this spindle there is your cv joints here and your axle that runs uh, right there, you've got the same exact thing on the right right and the left-hand side. This is a CV boot guard. Some people call them an A-arm guard. You want to make sure that those are in good condition because if you don't have those on there, you're going to have uh, more of an issue with those boots ripping. You want to make sure that when you service it or, or just going out to ride, you want to make sure that you check those CV boots. If they are, have even a tiny pinhole leak in there, um, you will, you'll have a bad joint before long, so you want to make sure and that you get those replaced before it gets to a bad uh, CV joint. A lot cheaper to replace a boot than it is the joint or the axle. You've got a front bumper up here. You can see right here on this model, this is where we mount the winch. Behind the winch, uh, which doesn't come stock on, on the Prairie 700, is your radiator there. You want to make sure that that's cleaned out from any brush and debris. Make sure that you can see through there. Make sure your radiator fan is working. Up top there, uh, center your front fender behind your rack is where you would fill your radiator up. It takes a coolant there. There's a radiator cap, but just like any vehicle, you want to make sure that the four-wheeler or vehicle is completely uh, cooled down before you remove those uh, cap there. You've got these side panels here that cover up um, your radiator, kind of a guard for those radiators. And then also on the same, the left-hand side here is the exact same as the right as far as your spindles, your axles, your CV boot guards here, uh, your lower A-arm, which is here. This doesn't have an upper A-arm, which a lot of four-wheelers do have. Uh, this just has a different, different style of spindle there. Uh, real quickly, there's your oil filter. Again, I'll go over that in a separate video. That's directly underneath your starter there, kind of behind your header. So to get to your oil filter, I like to come in from this left-hand front wheel well side and get to your oil filter there. Right underneath there is your spark plug. Again, going to go over that and what those specs are. Uh, on a separate video. You've got an auxiliary plug up here to the left of your uh, rack here, kind of in front of your air filter there is an auxiliary plug. That's good for cell phone charger or spotlight, any kind of power equipment. If you've got a sprayer on there, uh, you can run it off of that auxiliary cord. Left-hand side here, you've got a recoil pull starter. 
and that is nice to have just in case your battery is low, not able to turn your four-wheeler over, you've got that as a backup. Dipstick is here, also your fill plug. Capacity is here, your this whole thing is a coolant overflow or a reservoir here. You've got a an L and an F, that's a full and a low. You wanna make sure that your coolant level is between there. Moving around to the back left-hand side, you've got your exhaust muffler, your silencer, your canister here is what they call that. You've got, obviously, because you've got twin cylinders here, you've got your back or your rear um, cylinder coming in and your front cylinder coming in here. So you want to make sure that there's no holes. Make sure this clamp is on there tight. You've got a rear shock here. It's some adjustment up top of there. Uh, it's got a spanner nut there to adjust that shock. And we can do a separate video on that, but that is uh, done up there. Going back to your back here, we've got a ball mount for a, a trailer or pulling stuff around. You want to make sure you don't exceed the weight limit on this uh, rear hitch here. And putting a ball on there and pulling anything, you want to make sure that you don't exceed those limits. You've got on this model what they call a wet gear brake system. And you want to make sure that that, it, that oil is changed periodically. Again, going over that in a separate video. You've got your rear brakes coming in here. This housing is, is housing your actual rear brakes. So it keeps them cool, keeps them lubricated. And uh, you have to do way less brake repair, brake shoe replacement or brake pad replacement when you've got a system like this. You've got two wing nuts here that can, these can be adjusted. One cable is going all the way up to your handlebars. The other cable is going to your rear foot brakes. You want to make sure that those are working together and working properly. You want to make sure that there's not always tension on there. If there is, you're going to have your co brakes constantly be rubbing and your brake pads there are going to wear down a whole lot quicker. You've got a solid rear axle here. Again, no brakes or discs on the actual axle itself, which is kind of nice. Get that out of the, the water and any kind of sand and stuff can't get in there because it's housed in that rear differential housing. We've got back here a, a tail light, a brake light system here. And then be, beside that is your regulator rectifier. This is a common problem on any ATV or motorcycle. These regulator rectifiers go bad. What happens then is your battery isn't getting enough voltage from your stator and uh, will drain your battery over time. The other thing that could be happening is your battery could be getting too much power. Your stator may be giving uh, your battery too much power. That'll cause some issues as well. Could cause your battery to overheat and could be a dangerous situation. So you wanna make sure that that regular rectifier is good. On this model, you've got your fuel tank under the right rear wheel here or behind that. And you wanna make sure that you don't have any de debris up in here that's gonna cause uh, you to puncture your fuel tank. Uh, you've got a pretty heavy duty housing there around that fuel tank to protect you. But then your fill tank or your fill cap is right here above that fuel tank. You've got a 12 inch tire for the front and rear. There are different tire sizes, different rim styles. Going up on the seat here, we've got a lever over on your left hand side behind uh, behind your seat there to pull your seat off and underneath there you'll find your battery, you'll find your electrical components, your starter relay there, your fuse box here, uh, your engine control here, your igniter here, and a solenoid right here. Also another solenoid here. Here obviously is your battery, you have your positive and your negatives here, and then underneath this cap is your uh, air filter. So unscrew this this flathead screw, pop this cap up underneath there. Underneath there's your air filter. You've got four clips holding that on. Okay, again, on the right-hand side, we've got your shift lever here. We've got low up top, then high, then neutral, then reverse. You wanna make sure that you don't move that from one position or the other without being stopped. That's important to remember. Uh, underneath your handlebars here on your front fender is gonna be your ignition switch. You just have an on-off there. You've got your thumb throttle right here. You wanna make sure that you've got a little bit of free play. This is maybe a little bit too much, but you don't want this always engaging. Otherwise, you're gonna be um, always engaging your throttle on your four-wheeler. You've got your two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. It's a push button. You can do that on the fly. I don't suggest doing that while you're spinning or while you're flying down the road. I like to do it in a slower, when you're driving uh, fairly slow. We've got your front brake system here. This is a hydraulic brake system. You've got uh, a cap here, two Phillips screws and hydraulic fluid underneath there. There's a sight window there that you can tell how, how full your fluid is. On the left-hand side, you've got your start button here, lights, 
You got off, high, and low there. You've got a on-off switch here. You want to make sure that it's in the run position or um, the one with the, the circle on it there as opposed to the X through the circle, and that's going to be in your run position. Your override here on the left-hand side is going to be a button that if you're going in reverse, you're going to be limited to speed. You can hit that override button. You've got to hold that button, and while you're going in reverse, um, it'll allow you to go much faster in reverse. Uh, as soon as you let go of that override button, your four wheel will slow down. You'll be limited again. Left hand side here, you've got your choke lever. Um, on the on the side here, you want to make sure that if you pull it completely to the outside of your four wheeler, this way here, your four wheeler is choked. If you're going down, and once your four wheeler is warmed up, you want to make sure you kick that back into the off position. That's important to note there. On your left hand side, you've got a, a brake lever here, a park lever here, and a differential lock here. What this does, there's a cable that runs down to your front differential. As soon as you pull this yellow lever in, you've got differential, you've got actual four wheels spinning there uh, when you hit that throttle. So you want to make sure that you're not spinning again while you're doing this. Make sure you're not going down the road going fast when you pull this lever in as it is a front differential lock. Kind of a dangerous place to put there. A lot of kids will grab that instead of maybe grabbing the brakes and uh, could could cause some damage there. For your park brake there, pull this brake lever in on the left-hand side, and then at the same time, pull this little black lever in as well, and let this brake lever go. That's gonna snap back into your park brake area. On your dash here, once we turn the ignition switch on, I'll show you a couple different lights here. You've got your oil light, reverse neutral belt, your reset and your set button here. You've got a mode and a time set here. You got your two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. You flip that switch. And that should, if you're going, that'll switch over to four-wheel drive. Get your miles per hour there, your fuel gauge there, your odometer here, and your time here. To switch this odometer to an hour reading and a trip, you've got uh, just to hit your mode button there. It'll get you to your, your hours and your time there. Reset your belt light again. Make sure you check those videos out. You can hear it actuating uh, when you shut that four-wheeler off. That is a common uh, thing for that actuator to do. What you don't want is for three minutes later that, that still be actuating. That is uh, a problem and you need to get that looked at. We've got a rear storage box here behind the seat. This is supposed to be sealed up. So if you ever have rain or uh, driving through water, this is supposed to be a sealed box. It's very protected from obviously the cap. It's got a tight fit and then the seat sits over top of it. Um, I wouldn't uh, put money on that being completely sealed. So don't go dunk your four-wheeler in the river and expect that box to be uh, completely dry there. Just keep that in mind. Going down to your front differential, you've got uh, your differential there with your axle shaft there. You've got your tie rods here. These tie rods uh, have lock nuts on both sides of these by the tie rod ends here. If you need to adjust uh, alignment on these front, this front end here, you want to loosen these lock nuts. Go ahead and take a 10 millimeter wrench and adjust the tie rods accordingly. You want to loosen up both lock nuts there, one on the end, one on this end. And then again, if you're needing to uh, adjust your toe in, toe out, you can do that with your tie rod here. You want to make sure your four-wheeler is going straight down the road. The other thing, you've got an actuator here on your front end. This is a four-wheel drive actuator. So when you hit that four-wheel drive button up by your thumb throttle, this will um, engage the four-wheel drive or disengage the four-wheel drive, depending on which button you hit there. You want to make sure that that's working properly. Clear at the top there. Um, of your differential is your differential lock cable running down in there. That is a mechanical system on this. Some of them have an electrical switch. This one happens to be um, mechanical. So you've got a your shifter that obviously is up here on the right hand side. You've got a shift tie rod here. No panels need to come off here, but if you need to adjust that shifter, there's a same thing as your front tie rod assembly. You've got a tie rod here or and a tie rod there, and that rod there can be adjusted. You do need to pull this boot here to do that, so keep that in mind if you're needing to adjust that shifter. If maybe it's not engaging properly or maybe it's not going back into neutral or high or low or reverse, you can adjust that, sh that shift rod there and fix that. I wanted to show you real quick where that VIN number is on the Kawasaki Prairie. I showed you where that engine number is. Right here is going to be your VIN number, so underneath your left drive axle there on the actual frame itself between the two A-arm mounting bolts here and then where you almost can't see there is uh, your VIN number. Straight in the middle there, uh, right in between those mounting bolts is your VIN number. That's a 17 digits VIN number. You want to make sure that that is visible. Make sure you know what that is when it comes to sell your four-wheeler 
or if there's any issues, you want to make sure you know where that VIN number is. If you've got more questions on this Kawasaki Prairie 700, make sure you reach out. Make sure you comment below. If this video has been helpful, please like and subscribe. Check out my other service videos on this Kawasaki Prairie, and thank you for watching.